Sebastian Vettel ganó el Mundial del 2013 a bordo de su querida Hungry Heidi, o Hambrienta Heidi, que es como llama a su RB9. A continuación veremos de cerca cómo se crea un campeón mundial. Así se fabrica un auto de Fórmula 1. Comencemos por el montaje. El desarrollo dura unos 5 meses. The first build tends to take about a week as it's almost like the creation of uh, a very very sophisticated jigsaw puzzle that all the components have to be planned and it all comes together within about a week. We would consider the chassis tub, the part the driver sits in as the big bracket and everything else bolts onto that. So we make five chassis, two race cars, one for each driver. We have a spare that goes to every race and then we have two test cars. Debajo de cada pieza nos encontramos con abundantes controles de calidad superados. Do a phenomenal job because they have a huge throughput of components, almost 6,500 components are on any single car and they're constantly evolving and and changing and all of those components have to be inspected, components that are, that are measured to microns. We have an awful lot of rigs that we will simulate race situations and sometimes triple or quadruple the mileage that a component would see. Ahora le echaremos un vistazo a la fabricación. El RB9 se compone de más de 6,500 piezas individuales que a su vez se combinan para formar más de 100,000 elementos compuestos, de los cuales casi un 70% provienen de Red Bull Racing. We have over 20 large NC milling machines and mill turns, so quite complex programmable machines that are all there to machine pretty much every part of the car we, we could manufacture in-house if we wanted. First equipment is men, we need lots of men because it's handmade. Um, we need uh, autoclaves, five axis machines, freezers, hand tools, lots and lots of different equipment. Weight is our biggest challenge, so we're constantly trying to make the car lighter and lighter. It can sometimes be the case that we're machining parts up to the week of the event, where we then need to get those parts out to the track as quickly as we can. Ahora es el turno de los materiales compuestos. Composite bodywork is quite a complex and labor-intensive process, but it's a process we're prepared to go to to make bodywork for the car. It starts off life in the technical office where the designers prepare designs, choose the shape of the bodywork they want. We have to manufacture patterns, and then we take that into our clean room where we lay up the layers of carbon fiber cloth. Um, and that can be many layers, up, sometimes up to 100 layers. Um, once we've done that, we then seal all that together. We put it into a vacuum where we can suck all the air out and clamp the layers down. And then they're moved into our autoclaves, which could be considered a pressure cooker, where we cure the resin that's embedded in the carbon fiber cloth. Actually, all of bodywork. So every part of the car that you can see, the bodywork is carbon fiber. Diseño, investigación y desarrollo. Con el mismo esfuerzo con el que se construyó el auto del campeón mundial del 2013, se configura el RB del 2014, que por obvias razones no nos dejaron ver. El proceso de Fórmula 1 obviamente empieza en el conceptual stage, a veces en Adrian's drawing board, a veces en los diferentes diseñadores dentro del aero group. Um, los conceptos serán creados um, y luego se irán dentro del CFD um, o dentro del túnel. For an entire car, we usually start development for next year's car around about August, September time. So it's pretty much a five month window to develop um, a new Formula One car for a new season. Actually for 2014, that's a bit different because it's, there are some quite big rule changes. So we've started work a little bit earlier. It's about deciding out of all the projects and all the things we want to change, what's going to give us the biggest bang for the book, what's going to add the best performance to the car for the time and the resource required. The development race never stops. Quien sabe, quizás después de todo Sebastian Vettel repita y pueda levantar su quinto trofeo como campeón del mundo. Si esto pasa, ustedes ya sabrán todo lo que ha costado que el alemán se convierta en pentacampeón. Tu opinión nos interesa. 
Si tienes algo que decirnos, envíanos un mail. Esperamos tus sugerencias.